Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Butcher's Fresh Cuts coming at you here on Wednesday morning. And excited to talk some baseball, excited to talk to you guys. But however, usually we, we'd have more of a fun, lighthearted show. But today's installment of the Butcher's Fresh Cuts is going to be a little different than our usual show. Usually we like to talk about baseball players here, the players, the guys on the field, primarily the Brewers players. And we like to tell stories here based on stats and data. And we like to dissect stuff at the Butcher's Fresh Cuts. I'm the butcher, of course. And I like to take the big slab of meat, the big topic that we're working on. And I like to chop it up, dissect it, give you the numbers, give you the nitty gritty, cut out all the fat and give you the no nonsense stuff. But today we're going to do uh, something a little different and I'll get into that in a second. But first, we here at the Butcher's Fresh Cuts, we are a proud part of the Miller Park Minute Podcast and Streaming Network, your only source for daily brewers podcasts. And we can be found anywhere podcasts can be found, be it Anchor, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple, any, pretty much anywhere you can see on the ticker down there, pretty much all the places. We're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support the podcast, please do. Like I said, we are the only Brewers Daily Podcast going on here. Eric works very hard day in and day out, so big shout out to him. And please check out the fresh content that he and we have for you every day, seven days a week. Um, uh, so if you'd like, uh, plus we strongly encourage you guys to give us your thoughts in the comments. Uh, argue with us. Tell us where we messed up uh, because we're always trying to improve here and become your number one source for all Brewers related content. But anyways, the topic, like I said, today is going to be a little different. This is... Uh, this is more less about the players on the field and more about the front office. And I, and I do comment on front offices and baseball quite a bit. And today that's what the show is going to be focused on. And here we go. It is time that Mark Adamasio, owner of the Brewers, bids them adieu. Mark, please sell the team. It's time. It's absolutely time. Though the Brewers have had their biggest successes over the last five years and have had their winningest span of time in team history, we are clearly not currently in a position to compete for a World Series title this season or seemingly any season in the future as long as we are stuck with an owner who refuses to take the necessary extra steps it takes to win a title. Mark, like many, uh, I'll use these quotes a lot today, small market owners love to point to large market teams as a reason they cannot compete in today's major league climate. And Mark, you know, he's not entirely wrong. He himself doesn't have the same kind of money that many other owners in baseball have or any other you know, pro sports owners. He's one of just six owners in Major League Baseball whose net worth is south of $1 billion. He's not a billionaire. And I, and I feel like I've, I used to say every Major League Baseball owner is a billionaire, but that's not entirely true. Though the value of every single Major League franchise is north of a billion dollars, not every owner is, in fact, a billionaire. So if I have made those comments about Mark, I do retract those. Um, he's being projected around $700 million. That's his net worth, along with the owners of the Diamondbacks, the Marlins, Rays, Reds, and Rockies. Those are the six owners in baseball that are not billionaires on paper. Their own net worth is not a billion dollars. And just for comparison, here are the net worths of some of the top owners in Major League Baseball. Uh, the, of course, the, the most wealthy owner in all of baseball is Steve Cohen of the Mets. Uh, he's worth $15.9 billion. Uh, the, the Blue Jays are owned by Rogers Communications Group, and they're worth 11.5. Uh, third place would be Liberty Media Group. They own the Atlanta Braves. That's $8 billion of net worth. Uh, fourth place would be Charles B. Johnson of the Giants, worth 5.8. And Guggenheim Sports Group, the Dodgers, is now the fifth richest uh, corporation owning a baseball team now, not the first. And the Dodgers have long known been, as that team who's spent a lot of money and and also the Yankees uh you might note they are not one of the top five wealthiest teams so yes Mark is far far away from being the richest man in all of baseball but his money isn't exactly team money and I will explain more about that later in the show how teams uh run their finances as opposed to an owner of a baseball team now the Mets uh, everybody's talking about the Mets a lot and Steve Cohen because he's shaking things up in baseball and and from from my perspective it's it's for the better under Steve Cohen, the Mets have the highest payroll in baseball and probably in all of sports history. The Mets currently have the highest baseball in sports history, projected at over $335 million, with the next highest team being their crosstown rivals in the New York Yankees. And they're worth about 200 or their payroll is about $267 million going into 2023 as of right now. The league average payroll, according to Sport Track, is around or Spot Track, is around $148 million 
and the Brewers are well below that currently going into the season. They are sit at 19th in baseball with a salary of $106.5 million. Not awful, not awful, but not, not World Series team. Uh, not in 2023. Owners around the league have seen the spending that owners like Steve Cohen have been doing recently, and, they've, and those owners have been getting a lot of heat from fans and the articles from the writers like us coming out. To all the noise that he's been hearing, Steve Cohen says this when speaking to ESPN, and I quote, I've heard what everyone else has heard, that they're not happy with me. I hear things from people who are maybe more neutral, that they're, that they're taking a lot of heat from the fans. I kind of look at it like, you're looking at the wrong person. They're putting it on me, Cohen. Maybe they need to look more at themselves. Now, let's get into it. There's an idea that owners around the league project to us, the fans, through through interviews, through the the how they speak to the media when they have the chances. There's an idea that owners around the league are trying to spread to fans and writers that market size is everything, that the Brewers were in a small market. We're the smallest market in baseball. There's no way we compete. The, the way, no way we can compete with these big markets. And a team is destined to stay down to due to that small market they find themselves residing in. You know, blaming the city that they're in. Yeah, we can't win because of Milwaukee. It's your fault, Milwaukee, not mine. <laughs> Crazy. They're essentially blaming us. They're essentially blaming the city that they're in. It's important to know what these markets are and what defines small market and large market. And one example that I personally love to point to, especially in the last couple off season, is the San Diego Padres. The Padres are a small market team, even if you say they aren't. They are a small market team on paper when compared to the other ball clubs in baseball. The Padres are a small market team and it may not seem that way because they do have a population of 1.4 million people in their area, but population is not the same as market size. Also, the Padres have to compete with some of the largest market teams residing in their same state. The Dodgers and Angels are both large market as you can get, and the Giants are on the high end of the mid-market area. And then there's the A's. They're, they're about, I mean, they're not competing for anything. They're not trying, and their fans should be just as irate as, as many of us fans are becoming. Yet after the last two seasons of spending that the Padres took part in, the small market team is now the third highest payroll in all of baseball going into 2023 at $251 million. That's, that's about $150 million more than the Brewers are spending, which is over $30 million more than the large market Dodgers are paying this year, and, and more than $80 million more than their, their other state rivals, the Giants. In terms of TV markets, there are only three teams in baseball that have smaller markets than the San Diego Padres, three. So you can sit there and say, ah, oh, San Diego, you know, they're in California, they must have a lot of money. They're the third smallest market in baseball. So if you wanna throw around market and small market as a, as a term to define winning and whether or not you can compete and spend money, the Padres threw that right out the window the last two off seasons. The Twins themselves are just above a small market team sitting at the lowest end of the mid market level Yet, they have been able to make additions to remain a top team in their division, including signing Carlos Correa twice in the past two off-seasons. The Reds, they've retained Joey Votto his entire career, despite owner Bob Castellini infamously saying that he runs his team like a nonprofit. Now, the Reds may be a poor example because they are a tanking team to the largest extent, way worse than the Brewers, possibly worse than the Pirates. We'll see how that turns, plays out. The Brewers themselves in the smallest market in all of baseball managed to sign Brawny twice to big deals. They signed Kane for $80 million in 2018 and paid Yelich. But they don't, they don't want to make the move to take them over the top. They want to play Rays baseball where everything just falls into place every season. And, and you, you pay a couple million dollars <laughs> for salary every year and things just work out. Well, it doesn't always work out as we've seen. The Rays have made it, but they never won anything. They, nobody goes to their games. They're still in a horrible market. So uh, the narrative grow, goes that a player comes up in a small market farm system. He blows up in the big leagues, makes it through arbitration, and then gets plucked away by the large market team, right? Every single time. That's how it goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter if we, uh, if we bring up great prospects in our system. We're just going to lose them to the Yankees or the Mets or the Dodgers. That's what we've heard all our lives. Wrong. According to Joel Sheenan of CBSSports.com, of all the 200 plus million dollar contracts signed in baseball history, just 13 were to a large market team, 10 were to mid market teams, and eight to small market teams. 
but it's not completely lopsided one way, as you can see. Baseball also has something called, and you may have heard of this, called revenue sharing. Oh boy, Mark, you didn't want me to tell him about this, did you? And this is for everyone. And I've been in countless, countless arguments about this with fans over the years. Fans that can't decide if they're siding with a player, the players and the team and the city, or if they're siding with the owners. They, they just can't decide who they side with. Um, but for everyone who likes to argue with me on this one, this is a quote um, that I took from T-Bone Baseball. Under the current revenue sharing system, each team receives an equal share of the league's central revenue. The revenue is generated from sources such as TV contracts, there's your market, MLB Advanced Media, and MLB Central Office. MLB teams also receive a portion of the revenue generated by the lo local broadcast deals. The money spread out between all 30 teams. The market is irrelevant. And the MLB's luxury tax, you know, the one that uh, Steve Cohen famously overpaid by a, a bunch of million dollars, I think it's 50 or so that he's got this luxury tax, the one that the Dodgers go over sometimes, uh, that luxury tax gets split up between every single ball club as well. Teams are also not required to adhere to a salary floor. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard, of, um, you know about salary caps in, in basketball. You know about salary cap in the NFL. And that baseball famously doesn't have a salary cap. And I'm actually a big proponent of no salary cap in baseball myself. I want baseball to stay the way it is. I, I like it when a team like the 2019 Nationals comes up and beats a team like the Astros for the World Series. It just makes the, the series all that much sweeter. Um, so if a team wanted to have a payroll of just $10 million, there'd be no penalty. They can do it if they want. The owner can do whatever they want. They would likely have no fans come to the game or sell any jerseys or mar merchandise. But guess what? They'd still profit from all the revenue sharing I just talked about. That's why you got teams like the Pirates and the Reds, um, the Marlins coming in year in, year out and not spending jack shit. But they still make money every year. These owners just still rake it in. They don't care if you come to the game. All the money's split. So teams receive just roughly $1.85 billion in revenue every year with all 30 teams receiving an equal amount. This results in each club receiving approximately $58 million in TV money each year, with an additional $115 million being split up in streaming deals such as Apple and Peacock that are, that are new contracts that have just come up in, the, in recent years. So $58 million in TV money before streaming to each team, yet the Pirates' payroll in 2021 was just $54 million. $4 million less than they received in just the TV money. They put a ball club out on the field at $4 million less than they got just in TV money. Uh, the MLB also just recently sold the remain, remainder of BAM Tech to Disney in November. This resulted in another $900 million being spread across all 30 ball clubs. This being at least a third payment that Disney has made and the smallest one yet. So they made three payments to buy BAM Tech. And, and two of them were more than 900 million. I don't have those numbers, but the last one was 900 million. And those were already spread across the teams. This means that every ball club in baseball, including the poor small market brewers, bring in about $100 million before even selling the first ticket of the season. This brings me to a movement I want us to get all on board with. Now let's create a hashtag, hashtag salary floor MLB. Let's create a salary floor in baseball, a minimum amount of money that a team can have to spend in payroll every season. I think we set that cap at a, or that, that floor at about 100 million. I think it's a good number, you know, the amount of money that every team gets every year for all these revenue sharing, with all this revenue sharing. So set it at 100. They're going to get that money anyways. Let's set a precedent. Let's not let these, let's not let these owners come out and give us poor quality baseball year in and year out sell off your best players, and then cry poor every single time. MLB teams are also not required to publicize their accounting books or numbers. So when these owners choose to cry broke, we as fans are just supposed to believe them. We are seeing a cultural shift here. Fans used to whine at players for being greedy. We used to talk of the Yankees buying ring after ring. But for so long, we never truly asked ourselves, well, why can't that be us? Why can't we buy a ring? We have such a rich owner. We've been forced to read the headlines in the papers that with, with media members that work with the teams that, that push the narratives that the owners are telling them to push. It sounds like I'm making accusations here. 
and I am, I really am. They, they say what the owners tell them to say and, and, and they cry poor over and over. Oh, now we need to fix the stadium and all this stuff. Let's put a quality ball club on the field. Huh? <laughs> I defy any owner who says they cannot afford to compete to sell their team. Every team value increases year after year. There is no team in baseball losing money. Not a single one. Not, not a court. I mean, I don't care what they tell you. They're not going to open the books. I know, I know, I think it was after 2020 or after 2021 that Mark Adonacio famously came out and said, uh, you know, we can't, we can't afford to compete. I mean, this is just the market of baseball. Well, he's lying to you. Uh, Mark bought the team. Or no, well, he said in the offseason they were losing money. That's, but he wouldn't open his pocketbooks. He wouldn't open the, the numbers. He wouldn't show the numbers. He, he bought the team in early two, 2005 for $223 million. The team is now, according to Forbes, estimated to be worth about $1.25 million, or billion. That's over a billion dollar profit since you bought the team, Mark. A billion. So every team makes money. Every team earns $100 million every offseason that can be used toward payroll. And the fans in Milwaukee have been showing up. We were 14th in all of baseball last year in attendance. And that's pretty damn good considering we have the smallest market in baseball, right, Mark? Yet we sit 19th in payroll and can't get a good financial headline to save our lives. Everything we've heard in the offseason was, we're broke. We need this. We need this. We can't afford this. We just pissed off our best starting pitcher for, the, for what, 70 $70,000, $75,000. Yet it's come out now that the stadium needs upgrades and we want to stay here. And we can look to Tampa to see the teams will threaten to move if attendance doesn't follow. But this isn't Florida. This is Wisconsin. We love tailgating. We love going to games. We gave you above middling attendance for a ball club that's never won anything. Imagine if we had a star studded ball club. Maybe if we won something, maybe then that market would grow. It's literally something that we've never tried. Going for it, for real. So Mark, you clearly aren't trying to compete. You're just trying to put a ball club up there that wins just enough games to keep the fans in the stands. And owners like you are being embarrassed and shamed all over the place and Steve Cohen's wiping the floor with you. Uh, and you're losing the respect of the fans too. While you still look like the good guy, get out, find a billionaire, sell the team. And wow, as I was doing research for this episode, a story dropped at cbsports.com, this was, yesterday when I was prepping this, that the owners are putting together an economic reform committee that includes at least three owners, John Henry from the Red Sox, Chris Illich from the Tigers, and Dick Monfort from the Rockies, and a few more. Someone who's famously not on there is Steve Cohen. You know why? Because this meeting is set up to talk about Steve Cohen and what he's doing to upset and aggravate the other owners in baseball. Now, not much info has come, about, come out about this committee yet, and I will be keeping a very close eye on this, but historically, Every time one of these stupid economic committees have been assembled in baseball, the outcome is usually the same. They tell the big spenders like Steve Cohen to cool it, and they don't say a word to the cheap owners who are setting up the committee. This also could be the soft rumblings of an attempt to put a salary cap in baseball. So let's get the salary floor movement going right now and blow it up before the CBA negotiations before the end of the 2026 season. Let's do this. Let's let's start a movement if we can. Let's tell the owners what we want. If you if you aren't willing, Mark, to to put up the the money that it takes to win a, a World Series, then go find then go then go manage a soccer club out in Europe. And that's it. That's where we stand as a ball club. We're currently a, a middling team, not willing to spend what it takes to get over the hump. We keep bumping into our mastermind GM stepped down after last year, and we now have an owner who is greatly invested in a so soccer club. We need Mark to sell this team. We need to put the focus on the field and toward winning baseball, because if we don't, we're set for another set of dark ages and they'll probably just move the damn team anyways. And I'm a little heated today. And this wasn't as fun to talk about as other topics, but we'll get back on the fun, stat driven stuff in the future. But with that, I got to cool off. Soup pitch great. Don't widen the plate. Like, subscribe. We love you guys. Comment. Yell at me, yell at Eric. We want, we love the banter. Don't widen the plate. Good night, folks. Thank you for watching the Miller Park Minute. Go Brewers.